Hello everyone, welcome back to Dark Marketing. I'm your host Big Dom and let's get started. Now the main topic of this video is I'm going to go through a lowest common denominator scenario. Single system you want to run GSA website contact to fill out contact forms. I'm going to go over what you need, minimum requirements to get started. Okay, but in the process of doing this video, I've come to realize a few things. Uh, I did my channel with a sort of, you know, taking the approach of this is a course, and you learn about everything in the process as you go from the first video right up to the most recent. And I know that most people go out there on their videos and they say, make sure you watch my video to the end because, you know, that's an important tactic to drive up the view time. But guys, it's important that you watch my videos and you watch them through to the end because I make a lot of assumptions that I've already covered this before as if I'm teaching a class. So I'm going to go over a lot of aspects again from time to time that I think are critical for people that are just jumping in now. And I set a playlist on my channel because that's going to also make it a little easier as someone just wants to focus on a single type of software. But I realize there's probably a lot of viewers that may discard certain videos because that's not a software that they're running. But regardless, in those videos, I've really put a lot of great information that works across the board regardless of the software that you're using. So that being said, we're going to go over the GSA website contact setup to maximize for a single operation so that you can do 100,000 in less than 24 hours okay we'll also talk a little bit about X evil 6 which I have just upgraded to which I think you're all going to be interested in that we're going to go over various system requirements and good deals that you could be looking for for what you will need to get a basic starting system and then eventually scale it up costs of software licensing and minimal needs for proxies so that being said let's get started now, there are two basic uses of how you're going to approach GSA website contact. You're either using it for your own purposes, to market your own site and services, or you're doing it for affiliate marketing. And we're going to proceed on that assumption that you're trying to get started, you want to start a little sideline, and you're going to start with affiliate marketing to build your process. Affiliate marketing in the long run is more involved. And, but both everything I'm going to talk about in this context is applicable either way. But in terms of affiliate marketing, I think my next SEO power talk is going to be on the realities of affiliate marketing. Here on YouTube, I did a search, make a thousand dollars a day, right? Now, let's just take a look. Make a thousand in 24 hours. Hey, make a thousand per day without any money wow making a thousand per day washing windows really well can you really make a thousand a day with chat GPT ah make a thousand a day with chat GPT and TikTok how to grow a thousand income online by the thing oh look bullshit because you know what at the end of the day these are all bullshit and all of these guys look He's got 271,000 views, okay? 652,000 views, 6K views. This guy puts out a lot of videos. What is going on? The only one making $1,000 a day are the owners of these YouTube channels with the high view rates because the realities of affiliate marketing is much more complex. You're not going to take any simple system off of a video and bada bing bada boom, including GSA website contact, and just suddenly start making money overnight. It is a process of learning what works and how to make your systems work, because of course that's a big part of what we're covering here. But the reality of making money is that you find what actually works, the right pitch, the right people, and how you're acquiring those lists for GSA website contact. So before we go there now, 
Let's look at some basic things, because you want to get started. You're saying to yourself, hey, I want to do this. I want to start trying to make some money online. How can I start? Well, you're going to need a dedicated box, okay? And as I've outlined, it's easy to set up a scalable scenario. But look at these, HP 8300. They're always available on Amazon, 179 currently. Sometimes they go as much as $330. But cost of chips has been coming down, supply and demand. And so right now at 179 these are a steal. Look what you get. An i7 processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and 2 terabytes of storage. That is a home run, okay? I have oh, 8, 10, 12 of these boxes in my scenario here. Now, want to do something a little smaller, a little more efficient, draws less power, gives off less heat? This is the direction I've been moving because I've been moving away from the boxes and into smaller systems. You want to shop around. This is a great little model. This is almost identical to a set of four that I recently purchased. And look what you get here. Again, i7, 32 gigabytes of RAM. But we're only getting a half a terabyte here. And that's okay. For what we're doing, we don't need a lot of storage. We're just working with text files. So um, this is an ideal system. But I wouldn't go anything lower like these 256 gig models. You're going to need a little more than that. And the system is needed for the memory to swap out on the drive. So it, it's good to have at least 512. You're going to have plenty. Look at that price. For a single computer, you're not going to beat that. But eventually, you're going to want to scale up, add the second one, a third one, possibly a fourth. That's how I do them in, set, in quad sets. You want to get yourself a nice 24-inch monitor, something that's going to make everything easy to see with all of these tables and uh, dialogues that you have to deal with with the software. The text is often small. You want a nice 24-inch screen. Uh, this is a, you know, you'll see something that you can get or refurbished around $99. I have this, a couple of these, I think, the this, this Spectre, Skepter, but very nice. And when you look at these, what you want to do is you want to look for the ports that are available, okay? And it's the same thing when you're also looking at these computers. You want to look at what are all of the port availabilities. Because in this case, when you look at this, you need... You're going to have to do a VGA scenario. This is for HDMI, but this requires a special adapter. As you see, it's only curved on one end and it's straight edged on the other. So, ah, see that? We got a better view. So that's important to recognize. Always be checking out what the availability of ports. Because like with a monitor like this, you're going to be able to put in two HDMIs and a VGA. Okay, so that's good to know because some systems you're going to get the standard VGA and some not. I mean, standard HDMI and some not. So it's important to look at those little aspects. The next thing you're going to need is a switch box when you go beyond a single scenario. But keep something in mind when you get the first system, you want to get, you know, it's always a good idea to get the same thing, you know, in sets of four. Makes it easier makes it easier to get to know your systems and have identical scenarios. So when you when you make changes in your individual scenarios of, say, software, you can really get to the source of problems. Like when I'm having problems running GSA website contact, well, I've got four of them running. So if I want to change certain settings on different ways on each one and then monitor the results, I can move much faster through my problem solving and everything technically is identical. Okay? So... When you're really talking about starting, not more than $200 for a single system to get started. You should get yourself a monitor for $99, and this is going to scale up as you get more systems. Eventually, you'll need a switch box, and depending on what you're using, whether it's a v VGA type or an HDMI switch box, make sure it covers for the mouse and the keyboard, because... It's easy to make a mistake sometimes, and they only run $20 to $25 a piece. Now, the next thing you need is the software, and we're using GSA, and the two products we need for this marketing system is GSA Website Contact. A single license is going to run us $97, 
GSA Capture Breaker, $92. The nice thing is, these are licenses for life. Once you have them, that's it. You own it. Next, you're going to have to come over to Botmaster Labs. Now, if you're just starting off and you just need a single copy, you want to get X Evil. And you're going to start with X Evil 5. It's $59. You cannot just jump to the 6.0 version. You have to be uh, currently on board with them. And just a quick thing here, as I, I tell you, on um, I recently upgraded to X Evil 6.0. The licensing is a little confusing on this site. So I had to go through several exchanges with them by email and then we got connected on Skype and the guy said, oh, you know, here's the deal. Now, uh, I think you need to have a business license and even to, to get the 6.0, but the 6.0 costs $140. If you do a review of that product uh, on a, a video or a blog and you give them the link, they will automatically reduce the price to $80 for you. You just submit the URL in the process. However, like I have a business, I have two business licenses. Under a business license, I can run five copies of everything that uh, the guys at Botmaster Labs makes. But mostly, it's for the capture breakers. So because I do reviews, it only cost me $80 to upgrade to 6.0, and that was for my entire business license. So now I can run, under that first business license, five copies of X Evil 6.0. Okay, but at the very least, you're going to start with $59 for X Evil 5.0. Okay? Now you're going to need proxies. Now, X Evil can run IPv6 proxies, which are generally the most inexpensive. For $70 a month, you get $1,500. That's a nice quantity, more than enough for a single system. Lo and behold, there is Proxy Scrape, and there's some new other companies that are coming out, and under their premium proxies, okay, uh, let's, let's look at the, ah, here we go, sorry, I didn't realize. You can get started, look, a thousand proxies for $24 a month, but if you're just running a single system, you know, you could forego the IPv6 proxies, come over here to Proxy Scrape, pick up 5000 for $100. That's going to give you a nice quantity that you can divide up half for your capture breaker and half for your GSA website contact. Okay, this way they don't overlap. And I'll show you how I do it in my scenarios because I actually use, I get 15,000 proxies currently and I'm probably going to be upgrading that. And I also get the silver package for the IPv6. Now, for me, my needs are different because I run a lot of systems and I'm not just running GSA website contact. I've got four systems running uh, various things with Scrapebox and those only can use the HTTP6 or HTTP5. But these are great cost-effective deals. And in truth, you know, even for a single system, you might be able to get away starting 2500 proxies uh, and you know there are other factors in the logistics it's all going to be a matter of how fast you want to run and in this scenario what I'm trying to do is give you the setup that lets you run in a less than 24 hour period that you come home from work you get your stuff set up you get running at night and your things aren't finishing up until you get home at day and that gives you that that window of hours to get your next one set up but in this system the way I'm going to lay it out Moving from, moving across new lists and campaigns is going to be quick and easy to get started and reset very quickly. Now, two quick things that you're probably going to be thinking about because you're not sure what you're going to start with. But if you're not sure where to start, one thing is these guys are great. Let's say you start with a thousand proxies and you go, you know, you realize a week or so in or at whatever length of time, I need more. You can contact them and upgrade your package. And what they do is they start you at another 30 days, but they prorate in the new amount of proxies. So they're really good about that. You can sort of upgrade at any time, and you know, you're not going to get burned like you got to buy a separate set. And that's another great thing about Bombmaster Labs. When you buy a license, they will let you take because uh, they basically kind of got three versions like they call it the light the standard and the business 
Whatever you buy, they will let you upgrade the difference to the next thing that you want to get. So that's two good things to know that they're scalable in their costs. That whatever you're going to spend, if you upgrade the what you've already spent goes into the pool of the upgrade. So good thing to know. Now let's talk about the setup and logistics for a single system to maximize so you can do a good rate and this way once you've got your campaign set up you can run at a really good rate every day and run a hundred thousand per day with a single system so uh, even though we're using X Evil 6 in this scenario now I've only been running it a week and let me be frank I don't see anything magically different about this versus 5.0 yet I'm still uh, I, I mean, I would actually say, you know, in truth, I'm probably getting a very, just a small, slightly higher success rate, but it's not earth shattering at this point. So, but, you know, we will see. It, it does seem to have some other extra capabilities, like they just had a patch for fun capture that came out, that there are some captures this will cover that X Evil 5 won't. So, you know, the, the jury is still out. I'm not doing my review on it just yet, but I'm using it in my scenarios. Now, what I've been running is Autoblogging Pro here. And these are lists that I have done and pre-separated from World is Europe and USA is USA, obviously. And we can take a look at this setup right here okay we're not scraping we're not using filters and we're not checking it's all about the submission content okay so first let's talk about our proxies okay I've got my proxies in here and what I do is if you've got scraped proxies in here delete them all right click delete all okay and then what you're going to do is you're going to select Add Proxy. Best option is this second one here. Navigate down to here, and you can load up your HTTP proxies. They don't need to have a login and password, just a host and port, and it works fine. That's what I'm using, okay? 5,000 proxies of the HTTPS, like I outlined earlier, 5 and 5, more than sufficient. Now, I'm running multiple copies, so what I tend to do is I break my 15,000 list up on a per machine basis, okay? And I also do a little different with my X Evil. Here, I created combo list, and this combo list is a combination of 4,500 IPv6 and 5,000 of the HTTP combined in a single list and of course I'm running it randomly and so what I'm doing is I'm spreading my math out across the board because I'm running four to six systems simultaneously I'm also running Scrapebox now I load a lot of proxies in the Scrapebox because the truth is Scrapebox does not need as many proxies to do its scraping as many of these things do but I'm doing some also some very serious um, scraping levels and speeds because I'm doing on some of my best systems that have 64 gigabytes of RAM top of the line i9 processors and you know I'm able to really scrape like 20 million in a day although you know there's a whole science to that there's a lot of duplicates and getting through the whole process but we're not covering that in this video we just want to get through the fast term scenario setup so you're set to HTTP we're going to run 64 threads for this particular scenario and that's it now on the settings there's two ways you can go and I've been bouncing back and forth uh, many people say root capture is the best recommended setting or to capture okay whatever you set this to you have to set it in the beginning you cannot change it in the middle of the run you have to if you want to stop and decide you want to change it in the middle of the run what you're going to do is you you stop your campaign when it's running this button will have an option instead of stop start it'll say stop but you can just pause the highlighted campaign let it come to an end shut X evil off completely turn it off and then relaunch it 
Always remember to run all of these programs as administrator, okay? And then we'll see we've got our authorization and we are good to go. Basic setup. So let's go back to our project, okay? Because these are the numbers we want our project to run. Now, you might want to turn that up to three, okay? Because it depends on your proxies. When you start seeing the occasional IP band, this is when it's a good idea to have like a few extra retries, two or three. You know, generally two for me because I'm running a lot of systems. But if I was running a single system, I might want to run three. What you're trying to do is find the right, you know, the right sense of timing so when you sit down every day, you're ready to go to your next campaign. That this metric is going to play into these metrics. The number of retries that you configure your capture service, okay? And also X evil, okay? So I'm doing two retries. So, pretty simple because it's easy to get these added. You know, they, once you got them running, you just select them from the list. These things will automatically find them. And easy to test that X evil sees this. Got test capture internal. Boom. See that? We know it's working. Good to go. Okay? So, single scenario, three. But listen, don't exceed three. Two. Three, th th you know, three and two, and that's really it. Now, on your actual campaign, we're doing affiliate marketing, okay? So you're basically going to stick with the, all of the default settings on this, except for you're going to write your own subject line, okay? You're going to write your own message, okay? And you're going to include your short link. What you want to do is always make sure that you create a bit.ly short link. Bit.ly is free. Go sign up, get an account, and you make that's where you're going to point to your money site. Okay? Everything else is going to be random. All the emails, usernames, you want to mix that up because we're doing affiliate marketing and we want to use stealth to bypass the spam filtering systems that are going to be attempting to keep our submissions from being successful. Now, two quick things before we move on. In the past, I said that I used to scrape proxies, free proxies, but that was becoming less and less successful. That's because I run much higher rates now. And I did more retries and I ran my campaigns at 100,000 over a three-day period. So in those scenarios, I was getting enough retries to, you know, gradually works its way back to the list because everything that fails, it will attempt to retry as many times as you have it set to go. Whereas now I'm running so many systems and at such high speeds for submission rates that it's just impossible. That and because of the Ukraine-Russia war, China, there's a lot of IP blocking with those countries. They all have to go outside there trying to scrape up all the free proxies for their own purposes. So, that being said, we need to go paid all the way these days, okay? And what I also failed to talk about, in your configurations, you want to make sure under options you uncheck this. Search for new proxies every 30 minutes. You're just running private proxies. It will confirm that with you when you load your, uh, when you go to load your proxies here. Uh, oh, I didn't want to do that. I don't want to test my proxies. But I just wanted to cover those two points because they're going to come up in your thinking as you're going through this. And now we can kind of move on. Now, let's take a look at our options very briefly. Okay? Here, we want to be running 50 or 60. 50 or 60. It depends. Sometimes when I see my success rates, I feel them going down. 50, I find, is a good number. With 64 over here, you're going to run at a good rate, okay? And other than that, you leave everything set at the defaults. Global filter, only checking global website blacklist. In this particular case, I am not having this checked. This is when I don't want anything I've run on this system to, that's been run before to run again. It'll get filtered out in the blue column up here. Okay, notifications unchecked, that's it. 
this is basically ready to run. And what we really want to be able to do here is go like this. Once we've got our project set up and we've run our day, see what we got here? We got set, uh, the list are basically 100,000, 75,000 that were sent successfully, 21,000 failed, 3,500 got filtered, okay? Generally, what we are looking for is a four to one success rate. You want to be averaging about four to one. Here, 80 to 18. You see that? For every four that we got successful, four failed, there's always going to be a little filtering. Now, list management is a critical aspect of this because under these options here, I'm not running this filter. These are new campaigns. I don't want them being compared to my campaigns. So that's an entirely different subject, list management, which I'm going to be covering under another Scrapebox video. And in fact, there's going to be many, many Scrapebox videos. Scrapebox is one of the most important tools to have in your arsenal. It does so many things. And the types of data that you can gather with it and things that you can accomplish uh, and using it for its main purpose, which is to crawl and scrape data of all types, it's just invaluable, okay? But it's also a time-consuming resource. It takes time to learn, takes time to scrape in various ways, verify them, sort out and research for the contact forms. There's a whole process involved, and there's a lot to that, which is why you want to have your lists formatted and ready to go. So at the very least, when you do have Scrapebox, you're going to need it to sort and split your lists and to manage them, compare them against previous lists, okay? So hold that thought, because this is the process. Once you've got a campaign going, look, I keep a spreadsheet, okay? I keep <laughs> quite a few spreadsheets. But I keep a running tally of these four systems and what campaigns I've run. So here, I'm about to run a new one. And I just happen to be on the same system that this last one was logged. So I'm going to be going to my number seven on the list. And all I really do here is update this, the current date, and this is the same system. So I am done. So I know now I'm going to list seven. So now all I'm going to do here is duplicate my project. I'm going to uncheck all of these. I'm going to click yes. I'm going to rename this to number seven. Okay. Now I have to import my URLs from a file. So I've got my GSA. I'm in March, I'm doing world, and there's my number seven, these are in 100,000, bing, I am loaded, okay, and I am ready to go, okay, so now we'll get a quick look at how X Evil looks when it's running, okay, so all I got to do is select start, Send message. Yes, continue. And then this is how I like to run. I keep this window up. I launch my root capture. I keep this up to the right and expand it. And we'll come back and take a look at this. All right, let's take a look at things in action. We've just been running here about 15 minutes. Now, look at my rates here. I've got not that great. It's like a three to one. But early on, two things are going to happen when you start. You will seem a little light. You'll be running three to one or two to one, or you'll be excessive. You'll be running like five or six to one. So you want to just keep your eye on it, and that over time it balances out that you're coming to four to one. Now, what we want to see over here is green. Bad site key, that means basically the capture was unsolvable. Okay, but let's just scroll down here because I was getting some bad ones before if they show. What we were seeing was logic error. Now, as of recording today, it is August 30th, Wednesday. But last Thursday, 
what was happening was I was getting all these red logic errors, okay? And this is what drove me to reach out to Bombmaster Labs and get into Xevil, because on one of the forums, I saw a post about lots of logic errors, and someone said, get Xevil 6, and all your problems will go away. So I got the Xevil 6, but it was the same thing. And as it turned out, there was some change in two captures, and they were working to resolve it. So there's been a release of patches and updates, and there's probably another one today. i got to check Telegram. I know there was some yesterday. and uh, But this is vastly improved. But sometimes we get, you know, we're seeing some reg. The, the real thing when you're not sure, because sometimes it's beautiful when you're just seeing all green, is looking at your your ratios up here okay so I just wanted you to get a chance to kind of see it in action and what it should look like and because we're running at a really good clip all of our we're seeing just all of our processing is filling the screen even with this expanded rather than just being you know in a in a reasonable amount of area where it would only be up to here but you can always just kind of click up and click down because she'll jump down half the width and see what's going on and that's it for this portion. So let's just talk about lists now. Now remember, we're talking about a one system scenario. And at some point, you're going to get your first copy of Scrapebox. And initially, what you're going to do with it is you're going to use it for list management. You're going to learn how to merge, split, sort, and compare your lists, remove duplicates, all the, the basics, OK? Scraping is another science, guys, OK? Aside from having premium modules, even you know, even if you use the, the yellow page scraper and you scrape and you go and you wind up you get two hundred thousand things based on a search from USA Yellow Pages and you know, all locations, whatever, you're gonna find you got a lot of duplicates in there that gotta be removed and then again you don't have the contact form, so you have to go back in and run the, the link checker. And, you know, there's a whole process that by the time you go through a whole series of these things, you're spending your whole life doing this. And this is my whole life. That's what I'm doing. But, look, I bought lists from everybody out there that sells them. And there's really only like three viable sources. And what I found is that they all wind up feeding you duplicates because the assumption is you're going to be using it for affiliate marketing. Most likely you're not going to go through all of them in a timely fashion. You'll be leapfrogging and jumping because that's just the nature of things. People don't necessarily run consistently. So how do you get consistent? How do you get yourself to a place where, yes, my system is running every day 24-7 because that is what's going to also get you making money and even if, most especially if you're starting out with just one system. So I found that what was happening is I'm getting all these duplicates. You know my purpose of purchasing list was to save the time, the logistics, but I found that the list were just not bringing me the value over time and that's because I was getting more and more duplicates. So I'm at a point that if I even see 10% are new, I mean, it's just not worth it. I can now create my own list. But there are a few other things that I learned along the way, okay? And this goes back to the affiliate marketing talk. Now, whether you search, make $1,000 a day with bots or GSA website contact or just $1,000 a day, all these things that were coming up that were pushing aspects of get rich quick with GSA website contact or any other thing for that matter look guys it's just not realistic if you're getting into affiliate marketing it's like anything you have to learn the ins and outs and learn how to find a winner and you know what I found by purchasing lists in the last six months that those lists that those guys are selling and selling you the the dream they're not going to make the dream happen. I'm sorry. Okay? And what I've done is take a different approach. But I want you to go into things eyes wide open as you really learn. You know, if you really, if somebody really uh, made $4,000 a day or 1000 or 4000 a month or whatever, look, he had something super solid and he wasn't spilling it out to 300 other guys and saying, hey, and here's a list of websites too that you can 
actually, you know, that we've used. That's the list for you to stay away from, to don't do those. If you get those lists that other guys are recommending, that's the list that you should look at it like a blacklist. I don't want to promote those because everybody and their mother has already done that. And that is one aspect of it. Now, one thing I want to stress again, as I've said this before in previous videos, buying lists was good for me because I understood what I was purchasing. And in fact, I knew that they might be just all kind of things under the sun that I recognized, you know, they may not be the hottest or the latest or greatest, but just that they were new, freshly scraped, that I would see a diversity of perhaps responses and get a feel of where things, you know, where the market was and saving myself a lot of time and resources in the logistics. But again, once I ran into duplicates, they had no value. My services were unique, what I was selling, and they have very broad appeal, SEO and backlinking. So, that being said, for me, that was a really good option, but it took me a year to realize that for real things like affiliate marketing, these may not be necessarily the best approaches, and this is why now, since I am going to be and have been making my own list with good success, that I want to bring that to you guys because mostly all I'm doing my list for are for me and my services and you know I may on occasion where I have currently like with Autoblogging Pro, Pro they are actually a client so I'm more focused on the client work and my own aspects but at the same time this gives me the platform to teach you guys all about these things and this video is designed to lay out the roadmap for a single single system lowest common denominator and get started and that's why now if you buy your list from me the first month I'm giving you three million and they're a combination of Europe and USA but these are some lists that I had some good results success rates with on a single pass of promoting some things three million is a good number to get started a million every month leading out but here's the real Here's the real thing and the real trick about, you know, Scrapebox, because guys, I've watched every video out there on the subject of all of these softwares a dozen times each. And, you know, you, you, there's a Scrapebox video out there, hey, look how I scraped two million, video, two million websites in like two minutes. And uh, let me load a keyword list up here. I think I bought this list off of some forum. Really? Because if you pay close attention, there's like 310,000 phrases in that list when you look close up in the video a lot of times. And what they're really trying to do is deflect from the real magic is you need a mega keyword list. There's only like 400,000 words in the dictionary. And, you know, what are the right phrases? And then how do you really work those successfully using footprints and interchanging them, perhaps with, you know, combining them with other lists like locations? To really get the best results and so there's a long hard road to figure those things out and you know to have a phrase list a good search phrase list uh, uh, even if I misread it and it was 320 uh, 32,000 even that's an amazing list of phrases to have understand a solid 5,000 is really good if you're trying to hone in on a market so that being said guys what I'm trying to do with my site is I'm giving you three million to start, but we're just about to jump into September and the next list will launch. I'm trying to take the kind of approach that, look, there's guys out there really that made some real, hey, I make a make hundred thousand and make, you know, all these crazy money that they're talking about. It's because they found a way to really bring the right type of list into play to, to make the process with GSA website contact really work. So what I'm trying to do with my list, like in fact right now, I'm going after Shopify. Shopify currently has something like 4.36 million active website stores. People who are making money are spending money. And that's what we want. We want to go where the money is. And I have some other ideas of things that I'm leading into. And of course, your feedback is very useful. What are you trying to promote if outside of affiliate things? It's important for me to gain that understanding about those things so that I can, 
you know, work the best list because I actually plan to be pretty generous in this format. While I think it's good to start with a million list uh, a month, I may be, you know, adding to that. There's going to be a lot of bonuses, some additional lists for you guys to download. I want to people to experiment and give me feedback. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities here. And since this is a just getting started setup, right, we want to come back here and look at when you get these lists from me, you're going to get a single master list in each zip and you will get uh, that list as 10 additional files, each broken down into 100K. In addition, you're not going to have to worry about when you get a new list. That list is going to be pre-checked against all previous lists. So you're not going to need to know, have to sort it through scrape box. No scrape box required. You can successfully get started for the next six months or year with one or grow to two systems and just run your sites because I'm going to be trying to get what I feel is the, the much more high quality uh, types of platforms that could really lead some good results in terms of people promoting things and rather than you know saying hey here's a good list of things I don't want to give you a list of anything I want you guys to go and use your thought process to look for those resources that are offering affiliate programs that are up and coming they might be AI or SAS SAAS software as a service and get behind something that's good that you realize yes I'm gonna be able to kinda of pipe that that's a good thing to plug into what could Shopify guys be used to using because guys you're not gonna be putting diet products in here remember when you're using GSA website contact this has to be for things that website owners can use you gotta really think about it like that and over time we'll try to like explore platform you know niche is not really quite the right word is Shopify a niche because you know in the sense of a platform but of course there's all types of niches within Shopify and then there's that whole other angle because not the whole world is not Shopify in terms of you know stores or online stores so there's there's just a myriad of things to really you know take into consideration in the big picture of thinking the astrophysics of these things like right now I'm very hard at work at comprising good search phrases to combine into you know my list with the right footprints to generate and get really hopefully what I believe will be much more high quality sources and make things successful for you guys because guys at the end of the day the only thing I'm using it to promote is my SEO backlinking services as I build list and now I'm building that I'm at a rate exponentially I don't even necessarily have to be concerned that I'm uh, doing the same material that I'm giving you guys because I've got my own angles now that I'm going to be you know honing my process to which is not a part of like some of the type of genres that I'm scraping now so some really good opportunities here with this and this my system will make it easy for you to get started with the list ready to go lock and load and with this video and you review the other videos I've done on GSA website and contact I mean you can be up and running in 24 hours from that new box arriving from Amazon so guys as always if you like this video hit the like button make sure you subscribe We've got a lot more videos are on the horizon I'm about to release the first quick start guide video for Ranker X got a couple of scrape box in the making and GSA website contact is going to be a continuous topic in addition I'm also working on X rumor and X rumor is a monster I've also got the latest version of that so there's some things we're going to be wanting to talk about with that because that's a whole nother that's a whole nother secret weapon but it requires some extreme mastery and I've been out of those things for quite some time and I never really got great with it even when I first got it years ago also for those of you that are using GSA we're going to be doing more GSA and that is going to happen a lot too I'm going to really be trying to string these videos in because I'm going to make my own list for GSA search engine ranker and I'll make it uh, I'll provide a setup scenario most likely with Dropbox so you can synchronize it directly to your GSA search engine ranker and what I want to do with that is 
you know, I actually used to build my own list, but just for a couple of platforms with GSA. But these days, you know, as I was thinking about things, I realized I'm going to really start to build some amazing stuff for GSA Search Engine Ranker to take control of some of the things that I do for myself and my clients. And realizing that, I said, well, if I'm going to go through all this, I might as well make some really good lists that are going to be good for you guys. Because, you know, I'm on a lot of the forums in Black Hat World and some of the other ones where these softwares get talked about or their own specific forums from the actual product manufacturers. And, you know, I get a certain sense that people aren't too happy with the, the GSA lists that are out there. And I subscribe to a couple of them and... Uh, I'm going to really, you know, I'm in the whole process of reassessing and examining and starting to get my footprints together to make my own list. And I promise you it will be something amazing for those of you that use GSA Search Engine Ranker. That's it for today, guys. Watch for the next video. Thanks again.